What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel where we are talking about Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter Hunter, specifically a crossover. And who is we? My guest today is Laughingstock Media. You might know him, you might not, but either way you should subscribe to his channel. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. I'm looking forward to talking about this topic, and it's definitely going to be a good one. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people actually want this to happen, but it's kind of iffy about how it could happen. Is this even feasible? Because, I mean, a lot of people would speculate that Yu Yu Hakusho would stomp Hunter Hunter if it was at the end point of each anime, but I think that we both have an idea about how exactly this could happen, and that is... A crossover where both of them take place in two different dimensions or two different universes and whenever one of each of the cast of characters go over to the other universes or dimensions their powers are either scaled up or down depending on which one and it doesn't have to be artificial either like my pitch for this whole thing was like say the Yu Yu Hakusho characters go over to the Hunter Hunter universe well they don't know Nen so Maybe whenever they get there, they could be powerless and don't really only have like raw strength and speed. But say the Hunter Hunter characters go over to the Yu Yu Hakusho universe, they could be scaled up because they're working with such a complex power system as compared to Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense because you have to remember that when we're talking about multiple different universes, each of them is going to have their own internal logic and, of course, they're also going to have their own rules and, you know, their physics and basically their fundamental laws are going to operate differently. So, you know, theoretically, even when it comes to, like, Yusuke being super powerful or, like, the other Yu Yu Hakusho characters, for all we know, an Adam in the Hunter Hunter universe weighs, like, a thousand times more than one in Yu Yu Hakusho, so it's pretty easy to explain a kind of equalization, and also, naturally, you know, it gives the characters something more to do and a kind of obstacle to overcome that they wouldn't normally be able to in their own universe. Yeah, and one of the questions is, is what would give a reason for these two universes to collide? Why would they in the first place? Well, I've seen a fan fiction or two before about the Yu Yu Hakusho characters going to take the Hunter exam for some reason, but I come up with a new idea, which is uh, the crossing between universes, and there is an actual feasible way to do this, and this is with Kuwabara's Dimensional Sword. So with that, I'm going to pitch an opening, and I'll ask you how I feel about it. So I would start this story off with a good old mashing of the OSTs, the Smile Bomb and Departure, because I mean, those are the most iconic ones, because you could pick one of the 1999 ones, but let's face it, Departure is the most iconic. That would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can't have Yu Yu Hakusho without Smile Bomb, and despite the fact that I do enjoy some of the OP themes for Hunter x Hunter, I definitely prefer the 2011 version overall. Yeah, I mean, there's some bangers in the 1999, but their themes are pretty up and down, but moving on from that. So I would say an opening would be Kuenma contacts Yusuke saying that there's been a breach in the spirit realm. Somehow he's back working and getting along with his father again. And Yusuke and Kuwabara and Hiei and Kurama go together to go and find who's ever who's breaching spirit realm. And I would say that, that the person who's breaching it, his reason would be that he's stealing some sort of artifact, like kind of a throwback to the Artifacts of Darkness arc. And so the four catch up with this guy and all of a sudden, this guy opens up a portal to somewhere, and it closes, but not fast enough for Kuwabara to at least st maybe stick his sword in it before it closes completely, or be able to slice through it, like as it's fading away that there's still like some kind of residue of energy, and that's how they end up in there. What do you think about that? Anything you can think to add on to it, or, or subtract? Yeah, that's a great way, I feel like, of merging the ideas of not only this kind of opening between universes, but also giving Kuwabara back a lot of the agency he had in the Chapter Black Saga, because, you know, Kuwabara has this really OP ability that literally let him cut through the most powerful force field ever created in Yu Yu Hakusho, and then he doesn't really do anything in the arc afterwards. So involving him in such a major way that allows this crossover to happen in the first place, I'm definitely on board with. 
Yeah, definitely. And I would say that this could be where they discover their limitations, which allows them to feasibly be in the Hunter Hunter universe without being so OP. And that could be maybe Yusuke sees the man running in the distance and he tries to fire a spirit gun. He's like, oh wait, this isn't working. And so I maybe they wander around and conveniently encounter Gon and Kilua. I mean, this isn't canon to Hunter Hunter, so maybe after the 2011 anime ended, Gon and Kilua are going on an adventure again, and they notice that these four are pretty powerful despite not knowing Nen. Yeah, anime movies and oftentimes crossovers in general, whether they be in uh, anime, manga, or even other Western comic books and movies, they don't tend to have like 100% ability to like interconnect it with the current canon and continuity and have it make 100% sense. But we're not really here for that overall. We're here to see these great cast of characters coming together to, you know, not only oppose one another, but also an even greater threat. Yeah, definitely. Just getting with the cast of characters and well, later on the villain. But I would say the cast of characters to me, I mean, of course you have to have the four from Yu Yu Hakusho. And then you have to have Gon, Kilua, Karapika, uh, Leorio. Even though I don't see him actually getting involved in the actual action itself. Maybe he could be a background character doing research and interjecting once in a while. Like aiding the crew. And then maybe Hisoka... Yeah, I mean, you hit all the all the fronts right there. Not only do we have our iconic cast of characters in terms of the protagonist, but you have, at least in my opinion, the best antagonist from Hunter x Hunter, with that being Hisoka. And, you know, you can definitely say someone like Krollo Lucifer comes pretty close, but, you know, I gotta go with the clown man here. But in terms of their overall abilities, you mentioned something about Yu Yu Hakusho, and with the characters from Hunter x Hunter, I think there also is a chance of me Maybe because they're exposed to this alternate kind of portal to another universe, they may also have a chance of happening upon territory abilities. Because if you remember in the chapter Black Ark, uh, the characters that were living in the town where the portal to the demon world were, were affected by the energies of that dimensional rift, and as a result started to awaken certain powers. So even though Leorio isn't on the same level as Gon, Kurapika, or, you know, Hisoka, uh, the fact of the matter is that he would still potentially be able to get some kind of uh, boost in power just from his exposure to this kind of rift yeah that would be pretty interesting and i mean we could probably speculate all day about what kind of abilities that they would gain if they had territories because those are probably some of the most unique abilities in yu yu Hakusho, and those were just normal humans gaining them yeah they're basically like the stands from jojo's bizarre adventure which you know after watching jojo and then going back and re-watching all of yu yu haka show you could definitely see some inspiration going back and forth between those two definitely but i mean with these cast of characters like seeing them interact would probably be the most anticipated thing that pretty much every fan of both series would want to see so i'll probably pitch a couple and then you could pitch a couple so i think that Gon and Kilua teaching all four of the Yu Hakusho characters Nen would be a great chance to show that the Yu Hakusho characters are extremely powerful even whenever they're not in their own turf. So I would say that because that they have so much experience in fighting and with spirit energies and demon energies that they would pick up on Nen very very quickly and you could see Gon and Kilua maybe say like oh wow like you guys are on par with the pro hunters that we fought with the Chimera Antark or something like that. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, considering the fact that as our characters not only have used different types of energy in the past with uh, Yoki, Reiki, and of course Sacred Energy in Yusuke's case, but on top of that, they've also trained with some of the greatest masters in the Yu Yu Hakusho world. Like Yusuke trained with Genkai, for example, someone who knows tons of different techniques and probably kind of pounded that into his head with the torturous training that he's been through, so I could see See them pretty quickly picking up on Nen if they don't just like automatically have it by default the second they get in there. Yeah, I agree. And I think at this point, I would say that Karapika and Hisoka arrive. And I would think that a good reason why that they would arrive is because they could feel that something is off with Karama and Hiei being demons. And you can get this whole kind of, I guess, comedic interaction whenever 
Gon and Kilua find out that they're demons and have, uh, like, at least have some of the, that Togashi humor sprinkled in there. I, I mean, I wonder a little bit about Gon just because, like, you know, he's so fine with just going to, like, you know, really ferocious animals like that bear uh, that he interacts with in uh, the woods on his island. But I almost kind of feel like while Kilwa will be like, oh no, these are demons, we should stay away from them, Golans could be like, cool, demons, and, you know, try and, you know, figure out how they're different from from human beings. Yeah, or like Kurama could be like, oh wait, no, we're the, we're the good demons, and then Hiei being the edgelord he is, he could be like, oh, speak for yourself. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see him and uh, Karapika try and out-edge each other with their really dark backstories. And, you know, it's almost kind of like in Deadpool, where uh, Deadpool and his uh, girlfriend are trying to say, like, all the horrible things that happen to them. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, there's a lot of character interactions that could happen. I mean, with Karama and Karapika being my favorites, respectively, of each show, I could see them seeing kind of parallels in one another, especially Karama. Because Kurama has a dark side, which is kind of like a split personality from himself, whereas Karapika's dark side is more of a part of him. And I could see like Kurama like kind of buddying up with him, saying like, "Hey, you got, you should forgive yourself, or at least let go of some of that anger, or something like that." Yeah, that would kind of shadow in some ways uh, Kurama's kind of story arc in the Three Kings saga, in which, you know, he goes to Yomi's palace and he kind of relives his backstory and kind of helps not only himself but Yomi to move on in terms of, like, this animosity they have had towards each other for, like, a thousand years at that point. Another thing is mentioning both uh, Kurama and Kurapika. I think it would be, you know, something that maybe they would share uh, which is if Kurama were to learn Nen, for example, you know, maybe when he becomes Yoko, he actually taps into the same kind of ability that Kurapika has, and he's able to become a specialist. And that's something that maybe even could happen with Yusuke if he were to be able to, you know, go into that Mazoku form. Yes, and that's again, like, another thing we could probably spend, like, a whole video speculating on what kind of abilities that they would have, but... It's pretty easy for me to pinpoint which Nen class each of them would be in, Yusuke being a master of enhancement and emission, I could see Hiei being a master of transmutation, Kurama being a master manipulator with his plants, Kuwabara kind of being like half and half with a transmutation and enhancer, just because like, you know, Kuwabara has to be a little bit weaker than the three. I mean, overall, when we actually look at Yu Yu Hakusho as a series, even though Kuwabara definitely keeps up with the others and he has that really powerful Jigen toe, he still, like, when it comes to his overall variety of techniques, uh, was never really at the same level as the other cast of characters, you know? He was kind of, like, tanky, and he was able to, you know, you know, punch somebody good, but he probably couldn't use, like, half the techniques that Hiei or Yusuke end up using. Yeah, I mean, there's like a comedic scene where Hiei and Kuwabara are bickering in the chapter Black Arc and Kuwabara tries to punch him and Hiei just dodges him. We even see that in uh, the Dark Tournament as well, because of course, you know, Hiei is the fast one. And, you know, if we actually were to take a look at the characters and kind of put them side by side, you could definitely see a lot of parallels between them. You know, in some ways there are parallels between the two main protagonists in Yusuke and Gon. But then naturally, you know, we have the kind of edgier assassin type character like Kilua, and then the kind of edgy character like Sa- uh, I almost said Sasuke because, you know, he's very inspired uh, by Hiei. But yeah, you have the very edgy character in Hiei and, you know, both of them tend to have these like really speedy based uh, power sets where uh, Hiei is super fast and, you know, he is a demon who's capable of controlling fire and different flames from other dimensions. Whereas with Kilua, he gets that extreme speed that's basically like Ultra Instinct where he's flying around all over the place at lightning speeds and able to fight against someone super fast and then of course you have 
the thinking men characters like Kurama and Kurapika, who both have their own, you know, dark backstories and secrets behind their eyes, in a sense. Uh, you know, so just seeing them interacting and possibly, you know, fighting each other, which we'll get into soon, would certainly be really interesting, as well as, like, you know, the two more normalish characters like Leorio and Kuwabara. I feel like they'd probably get along the best out of everyone, though. Yeah, definitely. I could see Gon and Yusuke actually getting along pretty good because they both strive to be very good. And I could see both of them pushing each other throughout this story. Whereas with uh, Killua and Hiei, like their parallels, I could see them kind of being distant towards one another, especially with Killua, with, uh, with how you said that Killua might be distrustful towards Hiei at first because he hears that he's a demon, and then maybe later... Hiei gains Kilua's trust and they work together. Yeah, I mean, both of them are definitely characters who have a lot of trust issues over the course of their respective story arcs, with Kilua not even really having any friends and basically being forbidden to do so by his family up until his father says he's okay with it, and he, on the other hand, you know, being abandoned and tried to be killed by the tribe that, you know, he was from, and uh, not really having any real friends, I mean, having allies, but not really having true friends until, like, the end of the series when, you know, Yusuke helps to uh, open him up to that as well as uh, Kurama. Agreed, agreed. The only one that's like kind of like a one-note character I could see would be Hisoka. I think that his whole reason would be like, oh, I want to fight these guys, especially Yusuke because he reminds me of Gon. Yeah, but hopefully he doesn't do that in the Yu Yu Hakusho verse because I don't know just how far that bungee gum can stretch, but <laughs> Yusuke's gonna punch him so hard he's gonna get to the very end of it. Yeah, I mean... I think that Hisoka would not be there for the final climax because he tends to dip out whenever it really comes to saving the day. Hisoka is just not that type of character. Unless it involves playing volleyball, at least. Yeah. But I mean, I think it's a good time to talk about the villain. Um, what kind of motivation do you think that the main villain could have for, for going between these two universes? Hmm, that's kind of a difficult question because, you know, as we see with Togashi's villains in general, they tend to have a good amount of complexity to them. You know, you look at someone like Togoro or Sensui or, like we said, Hisoka, Kurolo Lucifer, you know, uh, you have a lot of these characters that have a lot of depth and dimensions to them. So with this character, I assume that he would have some kind of motivation that will also tie into that. Maybe some motivation that, you know, gives him a backstory that makes him aware of what's going on in Spirit World so that he could steal that item in the first place. And, you know, some greater purpose of not only going between these universes, but also perhaps involving the other main cast of characters within that. So I feel like it's something that would be obviously dark and have negative intentions for everyone, but it's probably coming from some kind of place at least from this character's perspective or maybe these this band of characters you know a number of them that are building towards you know some greater purpose within their actions here yeah i could see that because i mean it would be kind of boring if it was just an evil character for the sake of being evil i would probably say that even though that his actions might result in a lot of destruction and death. I think that his overall goal should be sympathetic. And I kind of gave it some thought, and I thought that uh, what kind of stakes to bring more than to collapse both universes into one universe that he can... Maybe he had, like, a dying universe or something, and that his overall goal is to bring his people over to a new universe, but in order to do that, that he would have to collapse both the Hunter Hunter and Yu Yu Hakusho universes to actually succeed in doing that. And I could see some kind of like, I could see maybe one of his right hand men having second thoughts and trying to stop him at the end saying like, we can't destroy two universes just to save one. But I don't know. What do you think about that? Yeah, I actually think that's a pretty good idea because not only does it instantly give the character something that makes sense within this greater crossover, but it also gives you a perspective from their uh, actual perspective to where you can tell why they're doing this, why they're going to do something so heinous to the audience, but to them isn't necessarily that terrible because they're saving everyone they know they love and, you know, their own people within their own universe. You know, think of the some of the great 
great villains like Thanos or, you know, uh, even like, you know, a Darth Vader or somebody who has motivations that they're going to do something terrible, but just because of the fact that we know what they're coming from, where they're coming from, their motivations, and ultimately what they're doing, we can sympathize with it, or at least empathize with it, but, you know, simultaneously we know that this is a terrible thing that threatens both the universes, and we'll have to force them to work together to overcome it. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, 100%. But I would say the final thing before the actual ending of this is, what fights would you want to see? Because, I mean, I, I would probably say that it'd be the most interesting to see fights between the actual casts of each respective anime. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, again, pairing them up, I'd like to see uh, Yusuke versus Gon, you know, the battle of the guys who are just gonna jump and punch you as hard as they can. You know, maybe we could see Gon, you know, tap into his, like, adult form that he used in the Chimera Ant arc, except, you know, maybe this time around, because of his exposure to the other universe, he won't just have some uh, horrible thing happen to him afterward that he needs to be healed. And then, you, of course, we could have the fights between uh, Karan and Kurapika, the thinking uh, men warriors who, you know, you have them spending their time trying to figure out the other strategy, try and probe them with like various techniques or, you know, uh, of course, like you have the Rose Whip versus the Chain Jail. Although one of the things that kind of is working against uh, Kurapika in this case is the fact that he wouldn't be able to use some of his abilities against Kurama without dying. Unless, of course, Kurama's just like, oh, because I want to see you at your most powerful, I'm going to initiate myself into the Phantom Troop just so I could see how it works. Yeah, or even if it somehow works against demons. I mean, that could also be another thing. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily just seal off someone's Nen. It could seal off their demon energy and make them pretty much uh, immobile and useless. Kind of like uh, Yuljin uh, when... Uh, Kurapika defeats him in the Phantom Troop arc. But then, of course, you have the battle of the super fast, edgy warriors with Hiei and, of course, lightning speed uh, Kiowa, and having them, you know, fighting against each other in a blink of an eye and having their fight already be over. And then, finally, of course, we could have Leorio and Kuwabara and have them come together and, you know, basically have a slugfest, I would assume, at the end of the day. I mean, even Leorio's power that we get to see is basically him punching through a, like, a wormhole, so I suspect that they're just gonna, they're gonna scream in each other's faces and punch each other until eventually they probably like each other and then, you know, decide to uh, hang out. Yeah, I was actually gonna say that. I, I could see them buddying up right after their fight, and then finally with Hisoka, I would probably just say, like, to like, for the final battle before they actually address the main conflict would be him versus Yusuke. And then after that, he's like, well, I'm out of here. I just wanted to fight. See you guys later. Yeah, I could definitely see that happening. I mean, Hisoka's kind of got that anime protagonist vibe about him where he just wants to fight the strongest guy who would be the greatest challenge to him, which is the whole reason why he hasn't killed Gon up until the point of the story, because he wants him to mature to his most powerful and then kill him. So I could definitely see him doing that with Yusuke, of course, with him being the most powerful. In terms of the actual outcomes of the fights, though, who do you think would win between each of them? Um... I could honestly see Gon winning against Yusuke initially, just because maybe Yusuke catches or just doesn't think as high of Gon as he should have. And then with the Hiei versus Kilua fight, I would have to give it to Hiei just because of the dragon. I, I would imagine that he would probably nerf it down to where it doesn't kill Kilua. And then with the uh, Kurama and Karapika, I'd probably say that that could be easily a draw. Maybe like they whip each other with the rose whip and the chains at the exact same time, and then they concede. Yeah, I mean, the fact of the matter is that they're so intelligent individually that I feel like it probably would end up with them basically just calling it a, a draw and moving on because, you know, kind of like in the very first arc, we don't, say, we don't see Yusuke and Kurama fighting. Instead, Kurama already is like, hey, I could kill you right here and now, but instead I'm just going to use this item and then give it back to you. So I feel like theirs would probably be the least bloodless in that case. But as far as Kuwabara versus Leorio, 
I mean, Kuwabar has taken so many strong shots, I feel like he'd probably win. Yeah, he would, but at the end of the day, they'd probably go and grab a beer or something afterwards. But uh, I, I, with the ending, I mean, I would say that just a good send-off would be like, like, hey, like, crossing between universes like this is very, very dangerous and we probably shouldn't do it anymore, so let, let's have a nice, good, heartfelt farewell and go our separate ways forever. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely how uh, a crossover like this tends to go. You know, it's not something that could stay permanent. It's just kind of a one-off event that, you know, the characters go on to live their lives. But as far as the villain, you know, how do you think that they're going to be able to stop him? Do you think that all of them will team up together and fight him, you know, at the same time? Or do you think that maybe they'll get uh, divvied up between, you know, the slightly lesser uh, antagonists and then like maybe Yusuke and Golan as the main protagonists will fight him together. I think that what you were talking about earlier with how uh, Yusuke and Kurama could become specialists, maybe they could use those abilities to help take the win and as well as the Hunter Hunter characters who uh, gain territories. Because I, I mean there's uh, so many different abilities that they could have but I would say that using their newfound abilities would be probably the best way to do it. Yeah, for sure. And it would uh, be a great way to tie everything in to where these characters work toward a goal. And then that goal is, is inevitably what ends up giving them the win against the great villain. So I think overall that this is uh, a really good story that I would definitely like to see play out. And, you know, uh, if some animator comes along and wants to do this, that'd be pretty great to see. That would be pretty awesome, because we gave them some pretty good cliff notes. But anyways, comment section, make sure you go and subscribe to Laughing Stock Media if you haven't already. And leave your thoughts below on what you would like to see on a Yu Yu Hakusho crossover. And maybe expand on things that we have, or give your own spin on a completely new idea that you have. But anyways, guys, that'll be the video for today. You guys all have a good one. See you later.